Stress and depression are something that almost everyone suffers from at one time or another. Many people think that if they could just find their soulmate, or get a better job, or a nicer house in a better neighborhood, that they would find happiness. But there are many people that have these things that are still miserable. They have drug and alcohol addictions. They experience divorces and mental breakdowns, just like the poorer people across town. Here's a big secret. Happiness comes from within. Once you have your basic needs met and are away from toxic people, your environment has very little to do with your happiness. I'm going to give you a very simple example at the end of this video that you can do at home for free that will make a huge difference in your life. Most sources of depression are about our fear of failure and not living up to expectations. It's about not being good enough, but good enough for whom? We often trick ourselves into believing we need to be good enough to win the respect and admiration of others, and that this will bring us happiness. Living our life to impress others sets us up to need their praise frequently to feed our self-esteem. We may find ourselves perpetually trying to outdo our last achievement. This will turn us into a human doing instead of a human being. We deserve to feel worthy of love just for being. We shouldn't have to live our life on a treadmill where we constantly must prove our worthiness. There is a better way. Finding our source of happiness and self-esteem from within gives us a constant supply of approval, simply for being. It gives us the option to remind ourselves of our past successes and to be at peace without stress. There's no need to hurry up and create another masterpiece, provide another windfall profit, or give another breathtaking performance to be worthy of love. It gives us the permission to take time off, to rest on our laurels, and to simply be ourselves. It proves to us that we're enough, simply as is. When we don't have to impress others, we find freedom. This freedom to be ourselves only happens when we find a way to love ourselves, imperfections and all. It sounds beautiful. It seems so simple, yet so few can achieve it. Why is this? Society has a vested interest in preventing it. If we aren't driven by low self-esteem to keep pushing, to keep working harder, and to consume more to buy happiness, then we won't do our part to keep the industrial complex moving. The people at the top won't get their cut, their taxes and profits from our sweat. It's a huge pyramid scheme, and we are at the bottom. If we stop, the people at the top will start to miss their luxuries. So they tell us through advertising and other messaging that we have to work harder to find happiness. It's just around the corner in a new car, a fancy dress, or hiding at that exclusive new club. It's over at the hot vacation spot in sparkly new makeup and jewelry with fancy drinks and pretty young women. It's on the other side of town in the upscale apartment complex or on the web with all the successful entrepreneurs. The powers that be keep us chasing this elusive beast with every hard-earned dollar until our last breath. We've been duped into believing they had all the answers, that they held the key to our happiness when, just like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, we had it in our own possession all along. How do we click our heels three times and say there's no place like home when we're trying to find our way to happiness? It just doesn't seem to be that easy. It's not. 
It's very difficult to ignore all the messaging and programming coming at you. It's not easy to turn it all off, to tune it out, and to drop in to the recesses of your mind. It seems counterintuitive that you should go to the one place that brings you the most pain. We've spent years and lots of money to avoid these thoughts, and now we're going to seek them out on purpose. Why would anyone want to do that? Because that's the only way to find what we're looking for. To crawl through the mud, to find our soul, to rinse off all the dirt and to hold it up to the light and to look at our deepest fear. We may think we're chasing a demon only to find a diamond. The fears that created the monster we see in ourselves are like funhouse mirrors. They distort reality. There are no monsters here, only frightened children that did the best they could in terrible situations, left with no tools or advice. Have mercy on them. Have pity on their tiny souls. They didn't know any better, and no one came to help. Now you have come to rescue them from the burden of the past. This weight has been so heavy on their shoulders, and we're the only ones that can lift it. We're the only ones that can tell our inner child that they've done nothing wrong. Let them know that you're here for them now to protect them, to help them, to show them the way out of the darkness. There is no greater gift than the one you can give yourself by loving your inner child, by forgiving your past and letting go of all expectations. We've all been molded into something that we're not in order to fit in with the world and to be accepted, to be worthy of love. Let go of the need to contort yourself into uncomfortable positions to impress others. Let go of the temptation to hurt yourself to prove your devotion and worthiness. You don't have to do that anymore. The state of mental health care in the United States is deplorable. There aren't nearly enough providers for all the people seeking help. It often isn't covered by insurance. And since the industry is only a little over 100 years old, it's in its infancy. This means that they don't have all the answers. They frequently resort to drugs that numb emotions, all emotions, not just depression, anxiety, and anger. Many people don't get the help they're looking for, so they either keep coming back, sometimes for years, or they give up and just suffer on their own. There has to be a better way, and there is. The original inhabitants of the Americas scrutinized and charted the human psyche. They devised medicine wheels to demonstrate the phases and stages that we all go through in life. The first step to solving any problem is to identify it. We name common problems and identify familiar patterns. We explore ways to address these problems and we make notes on what works and what doesn't. And this is precisely what the Native Americans did. First of all, we have to be aware of common patterns that happen in life. Just like we all learn to sit up, then crawl, walk, and finally to run, our emotional health can similarly be plotted. Life happens in cycles. As we enter our elder years, we'll again need assistance with walking. Things come full circle in many ways, over and over again. In fact, these cycles are so predictable that the Mayans devised a map of our life. At any given age, they can show us what our different influences are. And once we're aware of this, we can learn to work with it. Our life becomes more predictable and less chaotic. Years ago, 
before Columbus, we taught our children about the psyche and ways to deal with stress from an early age. As they grew, the lessons became more complicated, and by the time they were teenagers, they knew how to deal with bullies and toxic people, and how to recognize detrimental patterns of behavior. They understood their own strengths and weaknesses, and they knew how to be supportive of others without being manipulative. We've lost this wisdom in our society today. You can't be perfect in an imperfect world. And when you live in a toxic environment, you're bound to have problems from time to time. There are many people who try to help, but very few of them actually have anything other than kind phrases and words of encouragement. Supportive memes and posters can only go so far. Telling someone to pray on it or quoting a few verses of scripture at them doesn't give them any concrete tools for finding their own path to happiness. It's all a bunch of ambiguous wishes of rainbows and sunbeams that never materialize into real change in someone's life. This exercise can help you connect with your inner child. If you have a picture of you from when you were young, put it in a chair across from you. If not, see if you can find something from your childhood or something that reminds you of your childhood and use that instead. Remember what you were like when you were very young. Think way back to your earliest memory. If you can, reconnect with what you were thinking back then, what you were interested in, and what occupied your days. Take your time to get in touch with the memory. All the people in your life then, the furniture in your home, the things you saw on TV and listened to on the radio, what you ate, what you played with, your childhood friends will all help you to remember who you were back then. Once you have a good memory of life as it was all those years ago, I want you to talk to this child. Let that child know that you are their friend, that you'll always be there no matter what for the rest of their life, that you'll never abandon them, and that you will do your best to protect them from harm. Tell this precious child how sacred they are, that they're perfectly suited for the life ahead of them, and let them know that no matter how hard life gets, how disappointed they may be, or how much they may hurt, they will survive, and they will be okay in the end. They'll make it because you will be there with them, right by their side, holding their hand through it all. There will probably be tears, and it may be an exercise you find yourself putting off, but I promise you, if you do this one thing, you'll experience a major breakthrough. It'll make a big difference in your life, and it's free. You don't need to buy anything or pay anyone to help you with it, and you owe it to yourself. Thank you very much for watching, and please consider subscribing to learn more about the Native American traditional path to happiness called Native Strength. It's in you, it's in me, gift from all to set us free. Native Strength, from the stars to our soul, it's worth more than all the gold.